this is it. Finally starting a YouTube channel. Something I've been meaning to do for, I don't know, like five years. Uh, so here's the intro. Um, it's pretty much gonna be an automotive related channel. Because uh, as you can see behind me, I've got a lot of uh, car stuff and I'd like to start documenting that. I think I can make a pretty cool channel with some decent content. Um, I want to start by saying that I am by no means a mechanic. It's all hobby. Sometimes I know what I'm doing and sometimes I'm figuring it out. And I'd like to document that and show people who might want to watch that. Um, so this is a slow project. It's a 94740i with a V12 swap. It's not going to be shown all that much in the beginning of the channel just because it's kind of on the back burner, uh, which leads me into this one here. This is my pride and joy, uh, my 94520i, originally from Italy, then made its way all the way here to Canada from the previous owner, and then I bought it from that person. And since I've got it completely stock, changed quite a few things. Uh, we've got coilovers, wheels, 8 series front brakes, 540 rear brakes, LSD, um, M50 B25 swab, turbo, some interior things. It's got quite a bit done to it and it's definitely not done yet. Uh, and I don't know that it ever will, which leads me into talking about the name of the channel, Never Ending. Uh, I came to the conclusion that that would be a pretty good name because if you ask any person with a project car or a project of anything, they'll usually tell you that it's never done. So I figured that would be a pretty clever name to go with. So now uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll show you around the garage that I'll be working in that you'll be seeing mostly on the channel and uh, a little bit about a little bit more about all, uh, all the projects. So this is it, my little garage that I get to work in. It's not huge, but it gets the job done. I'm not going to complain. Definitely beats working outside. I've done that way too many times and still do from time to time. So fit the two cars here decently with some, some space for a bunch of other garbage because I just collect way too much stuff. So let's go and uh, see what we got. So a couple of things which will probably get documented on the channel will be hopefully the build of this uh, the build of this M50. Uh, I've got some uh, work VSKFs here that I'm working on slowly, which I will showcase a little more in the channel as well. Just the progress of it and uh, how I'm going about doing it. It's my first set of uh, three-piece wheels, and so it's been uh, a bit of a learning process, but uh, definitely gonna take you guys along for the ride of that. As you can see, there's parts everywhere and there's just way too much stuff. We've got an M5 bumper up there, a bunch of uh, M50 intake manifolds, coilover parts, more coilover parts, semi-slicks, a big mix of E90, E38, and E34 parts here, and we've got the E38 here, it's Calypso Rot Red, Style 32s, Style 95s, and what you guys probably want to hear a bit more about is the main project here, the E34. So this is it, the main project I've been working on for I think five years. It's been slow. First with suspension, then cooling, then brakes, and then finally last year I was able to turbo it. So as you can see the engine bay has been painted. That was probably about two years ago now that I did that. Uh, I think I'm on my third motor. It was initially a 520 that came in the car, uh, or an M50B20, which was swapped to an M50B25 stock NA, used that for two years or so, and then 
made a 3 liter stroker M50 which uh, I messed up and didn't do properly uh, which was then supercharged and it just a, was a very terrible setup. So now it's back to a stock M50B25 here and um, with that being said uh, internally it's pretty stock um, nothing has been done yet that's what the other motor that I was showing you guys earlier is for. That one's uh, hopefully going to be eventually built with uh, forged internals and all that jazz. Uh, but as you can see, there's a decently sized uh, HX35 over there. And I'm using the Rapid Spool Industries turbo manifold, custom exhaust all the way back. Um, it's pretty much home built. Uh, nothing too special just yet. The plan was to have a basic setup for one season, work out all the kinks with the turbo setup, and then you know run it safely. I think it was about 7 PSI, so not much of a power increase, but I have a couple of goodies on the way. Uh, I've got a uh, cut ring head gasket coming and a copper spacer, so we can hopefully turn up the boost a little bit more afterwards. So a few things to address on my setup that I'd like to change would be the mounting of the ECU. Uh, this is the uh, Mega Squirt plug and play, um, which is initially intended for E36s, which use the same motor. But uh, that being said, it doesn't fit very well. Um, it's kind of just dangling around in there, and I'd like to come up with a uh, better solution for that. It's also a bunch of uh, wires kind of going everywhere. Uh, some of that was just me trying to test some inputs and outputs and others are somewhat set up now so it's just now time to uh, clean that up. I also have my boost solenoid here uh, to control uh, boost and um, even though I followed instructions and I think I have it all plumbed up correctly it wasn't really working so I'm going to address that. I would like to get the turbo itself powder coated. Uh, the turbo was rebuilt at some point, I don't know if they painted it during then, but uh, the paint isn't doing very well. It's been flaking off, so I'd like to powder coat it. Uh, I kind of want to go with uh, a bit more of a black theme with things in here, so white engine bay with black accents. I want to paint the valve cover black, turbo black, um, maybe black intercooler piping. Moving on to the intercooler piping, it is something I do want to change as well. Um, not only the color, it's just uh, there's a lot of bends um, and a lot of couplers. I'd like to reduce the amount of couplers if at all possible, maybe get some vibrant HD clamps or something similar. As you can see here, we've got the E36 Mishimoto uh, rad, um, full aluminum. It's been holding up pretty well. I've heard mixed reviews on them, but my take on it, it's been, it's been holding up. I've had it for probably about three years now. I also have the um, Mishimoto HD, uh, I th think it's the 16 inch fan, um, that's also been uh, doing me just fine. It's temperatures have been great, I uh, haven't had any overheating issues at all. Uh, as you can see here too, I deleted the mechanical fan, it's been gone for years and I haven't had any problems and that's being NA boosted, It's it's been fine. Another thing I'd like to address as well is the uh, braided front brake lines. So when I did the wire tuck on the car, I got rid of all of the ABS stuff that would usually be just below here. Um, and in doing that, I had to change the lines. And I discovered that you can buy pre-made uh, braided uh, brake line that is now coming straight off the master, going all the way across the back of the firewall for the passenger side, and then a shorter run going into the uh, driver side uh, wheel well. One thing though that I also might have to change at some point is uh, getting a proportioning valve because uh, something to do with the one side being longer than the other might uh, drive more pressure to one side. Uh, not something I've been noticing at all but if I ever do end up going to the track it's something that might uh, might come up. As well with the lines, uh, I do have this one just sort of dangling across the back of the firewall, so something that I will be addressing there too is um, attaching it to the firewall with uh, clips that would go across the entire uh, the entire backside here so that's not rubbing on the transmission, rubbing uh, against all the paint and everything and ruining it.
something else that's bothering me too is uh, all the different clamps I have. Some are 10 mils, some are 11 mils, uh, and the couplers as well. I've got some black ones, got some blue ones, got some red ones. I want it to match. Uh, I want to really go with a, a nice theme and really clean things up because I've spent so much time painting this engine bay and trying to do such a good job on it. Um, I find that a lot of the other stuff is uh, just not up to par. So moving on to the interior, something that's uh, pretty new to me is the NRG FRP basic seat. Um, holds me in pretty well. I was a little bit skeptical at first. I thought it might be cheap and uncomfortable, but honestly, I've been I've been enjoying it so far. And compared to some other seats that I've sat in, it's actually pretty comfortable. So I definitely would recommend that. I've got a Nardi wheel. I honestly don't even know which model it is, uh, but it's so comfortable and I think it suits the car. I think it uh, it's very period correct. Um, if at all possible, I would definitely like to have the leather reconditioned on it at some point, but aside from that, it's it's a fantastic wheel, great size, not, uh, not too deep. It's, it's been perfect. Moving on, I've got a, I guess, quote unquote, eBay uh, chassis mount shifter. Uh, honestly, I would recommend this as well. It's been amazing. Uh, I've had it for all of last season and I have not a lot of complaints with it. The only issue that I have had is the uh, adjuster nut on the bottom, the locking nut, it came loose. Uh, probably my fault, but just one thing to note. Uh, I've also got the uh, beautiful M5 shifts around there. Pretty desirable piece and I picked it up for a really good deal years ago. Behind that, which I unfortunately can't turn on at the moment because uh, the battery is out of the car and charging since the car is technically stored for winter time, is uh, like a DIY Raspberry Pi uh, digital dash so I can read everything off of my Mega Squirt. And I can actually technically tune it on the go, but what it's mainly intended for is just displaying information. Moving on up, I've got my wideband and my oil pressure sensor. I know the oil pressure sensor looks archaic, however, uh, I did have a digital one and the sensor started to fail, so I decided to take a step back and get something a little more simple. So as for wheels here, I've got the MK Motorsport Mark 1s. Uh, these are 17s. The fronts are 17 by 8.5 and the rears are 17 by 10, I believe. So yeah, that's just a list of a few things that I want to do with the E34. So moving on into the slower project, I can start to cover the E38. So here's the mess that is my 94 740i. And I got this car initially as a parts car to a 750IL that I had, but it turns out this one was cleaner and I'm always full of crazy ideas and decided that I wanted to take the V12, slap it in here and call it a day. And it turns out that that's not quite how it goes. Um, so as it sits right now, the V12 is in, the transmission is in, uh, I have had it running and if I can find the video clip of that, um, I, I will I'll attach it, I'll put it in the video. As soon as I confirm that I can actually get it running in this vehicle uh, after changing the entire body harness to match the engine harness, um, I pulled it out to redo gaskets and that's kind of how it sat. Um, so recently, about a month ago, I did put the motor back in after doing a lot of the gaskets, but I still have a lot to get. Um, aside from the V12, I have a full um, sport interior to put into it. Uh, it has uh, BC Racing Extreme Lows installed with uh, Swift with a Swift coil upgrade, uh, and I have a lot to do to this car, but uh, it probably won't be the highlight of the channel just yet. Uh, I want to focus on the E34 first, and then once I get more complete with that one, then I will focus more attention to this one. So I think that pretty much wraps up the intro to my channel. Uh, what I might do soon uh, when the weather gets a little nicer is show my daily and a couple of things that has done to it. Uh, there isn't going to be much in the way of mods for that car because it, it is just a daily, but uh, I might do some videos on regular maintenance that I have to do to it, such as like a wheel bearing, um, maybe a little bit of exhaust work and things like that. So if you 
want to follow along for the ride of me working on my projects and documenting mostly car-related stuff, then feel free to subscribe. All right, have a good one.